All right, welcome back to Noob School. Uh, this is where, as you know, we we find outstanding business people, salespeople, and we bring them back to when they started and try to help you with what they learned along the way, the do's and the don'ts. And today I've got Drew Felty. Drew's a friend of mine going back, uh, I think, maybe 10 years. Uh, yeah. At least 10 years. Absolutely. And my, uh, I'm forever grateful to Drew because he gave my daughter Lizzie a chance to work for him as an intern when she was in school. That was easy. That, that's the, how's, no favor. How'd that she do? Great. She was fantastic. Yeah? Yeah, incredibly smart. Yeah. I Always so. smiling, too. <laughs> that's Lizzie. That's true. Yeah. So do you, you have any extra work she might be able to help you with now? Absolutely. Yes? Yes. yes. Lizzie? <laughs> there you go. I told you. All right. Um, so tell us where you are now, what you're doing now, and then we'll back up to when you started. Uh, where I am today. Okay. So, uh, well, um, the, the answer to that starts eight years ago. Okay. My business partner and I started two companies. Okay. One was a, a was an online school, and then the other one was a uh, consumer research company. And okay. it all revolves around packaging in the world of packaging. Okay. So uh, uh, 12 months ago, we were able to move the consumer research company into a larger, you know, 15,000 employee publicly traded company called Quad. Yeah. And so now my, uh, my, my day job, you know, 40 plus hours a week is I'm the director of an innovation center for Quad okay. uh, in the middle of downtown Greenville. Yeah. And so we're inviting Quad clients and, you know, new prospective clients there all the time. And we're talking about all kinds of uh, 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 possibilities around the world of packaging and, and you know, how some big yeah. brands go to market mm -hmm. and uh, adding a, a, a good scientific layer of con consumer research to that. Okay. So then at night when that's over, uh, still helping to, to grow and run a 12-person uh, a organization packaging school. Mm -hmm. And uh, packagingschool.com, that's an online uh, school for, for the world, really, right. uh, for packaging knowledge. So right. a fantastic resource. Great, <clears throat> that's cool. So you've got you've got uh, you've got packagingschool dot com, which I would say is similar to noobschool dot sure. org, just for a different market. Absolutely. How many um, like instructional videos do you have for the school? Uh, uh, so so we've been doing this for eight years, and and we have courses that have lessons within them, and yeah. so you know you add all that up plus marketing, which mm -hmm. is another important thing to yeah. invest in with videos. Uh, uh th several thousand videos. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Several thousand. Do you have a podcast? Uh, we've been a part of many podcasts, okay. but, uh, uh, we made a decision a couple years ago not to do that. Uh, but, but we, we, we love the ideas and we subscribe to multiple podcasts. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> so you're basically running two businesses now, one that you've sold to someone and you're a part of, and then one that you and your partner still own. That's correct. Okay. That's very cool. And I definitely want to spend more time with you on the packaging school thing, see what I can learn for the noob school. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, so when you started, I think I think you told me you graduated from the Citadel in 98? That's right, 1998. Okay. 98, all right. A long time ago. Now. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, and you had a computer science degree or what do they call it? Uh, Information science? Uh, uh, a business degree yeah. and then a minor in management information science, which is like computer science light. I, okay. I was exposed to code, but not required to, to write my own. Okay. Degree. So you kind of got classes on computer science Absolutely. and things like that. Yes. Okay. So you graduated from that, and your first job was with a computer software company called Cambar. That's right. And where are they based? Uh, they were in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston. Yeah, yep. And okay. another Citadel grad was was my first boss out of there. So, okay. uh, was he the owner? Uh, he was not. He was he was the VP for sales though. Okay, so. okay. And who was that? Uh, Gene Cammer, class Gene. of eighty one. Okay. So. Huh. Class of eighty one. I didn't know him. That's so weird. Huh. So I was just I was class of eighty three. I should have. Guess there was probably only two people interested in computers. At that point, <laughs> um, well, that's cool. So you went to work as a business analyst. That's right. Yep. Okay. So how how was that starting out? It was great. It was a uh, you know uh, uh, first job. Uh, yeah. uh, now to 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 sort of level set where we were at that day and age. Uh, um, the the software was order management and warehouse management systems, yeah. right? 
and uh, everything was green screen. So, mm-hmm. you know, you'd have to memorize certain keys and functions to, <laughs> yeah. to enter into it. Yeah. And the big event on the horizon was Y2K. And, wow. and so we spent a lot of time uh, updating software and systems for, for clients yeah. and uh, got to, you know, be a little bit of a road warrior going across the nation, uh, helping folks uh, get ready for, for Y2K. So mm-hmm. that was a, a, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? Uh, well, then uh, I followed my wife up here to, to Greenville, uh-huh. South Carolina, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, was able to uh, get introduced to a couple of folks that work for ScanSource. Yeah. Uh, fantastic uh, success story out yeah. of Greenville. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, because ScanSource used the order management system that Canbar Software had developed, okay, uh, I kind of had uh, a little edge in, in there. They use uh, it like down in Mississippi or Memphis or wherever the big <clears throat> warehouse was? Uh, uh, in in uh, um, Tennessee, absolutely. Tennessee. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, they did. Now, again, that's back in in early two thousand. Yeah, uh, they they've migrated a couple times uh, since then. Okay, so. but that's what they for, back okay. back in those days. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Um, now you weren't in sales, but tell us a little bit about kind of what you learned about sales during that time. And I'm sure, even though your card didn't say sales, you had to sell along the way, sell to get a job, promotion, whatever. Talk to us about that. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, I, I was not uh, in sales directly, yeah. but absolutely in, in sales support. And so uh, uh, both for um, there and then on uh, the, the merchandising side, mm-hmm. you know, at ScanSource, you know, mm-hmm. it was all about uh, servicing clients and customers. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, another couple jobs after that that were government contract oriented. It was it was supporting that sales process. Okay, uh, and and so it, it wasn't actually until I was a business owner that I was you know formally responsible for sales yeah. because yeah. you know uh, uh, that that's where the buck stops right. Yeah. So, um, but but you know throughout the the previous fifteen years, no. uh, had had been on you know numerous ride alongs and you know uh, um, uh, acting uh, somewhat as a as a subject matter expert. Yeah. And, in a few ways uh, for, for folks and helping them close deals or further yeah. their own customer relationships. So what did you notice about <clears throat> what made a salesperson a good salesperson, okay salesperson, or not so good? Uh, uh, well, the the ability to keep a conversation going, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a given. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then on top of that, you know, uh, being likable, you know, yeah. agreeable and, and being able to get along with folks, you know, was, was – uh, what I saw as, as number one for the successful folks, you know, yeah. uh, I, I, I interacted with some, some folks that were a little more hard nosed. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. And you know, that, that took them to some amount of success, but yeah. not the same as the folks who seem to be easygoing and, 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 you know, have a good time yeah. and, and creating relationships and keeping them over the years. Interesting. Right? That's such an interesting point coming from your perspective. Cause you weren't, you know, you weren't in sales. You were just getting to watch it. Right. As a, as a, expert. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, I say, if, if you don't, if you're not able to get along with people and be kind and do what you say you're going to do and just, you know, those, if you can't do those basics, you don't have a chance to be really successful. Absolutely. Right. Now that's not going to make you successful. Right. It's just kind of almost like an ante, right? It gets you in the game. You can now play the game because you're in, but that's a really good point. It's a simple stuff. I had someone show up the other day, for a meeting, I mean, he flew, you know, for this meeting to get here, chomping on the gum, hmm. chomping on the gum. <laughs> it's like you got to be kidding, right? I mean, don't know that. Yeah. So you know, you can't do that. Right on. Yeah, chomp the gum. All right. <clears throat> um, do you have any? Well, no, it's, it's interesting you say you didn't really know you were in sales until you became the, a business owner. Because right. all of a sudden, it goes from just this thing over there that someone does to, if we don't sell this much stuff, we're going to have to fire somebody, <laughs> right? Or or worse. Yeah, yeah. Well, as we started out, it was just my, my business partner and I. And uh, uh, so there was nobody else. <laughs> and and so, uh, uh, you know, I, I had I skipped a part in there where uh, I, I dropped out of, of full-time work and was able to do the full-time MBAE program mm-hmm. at Clemson, mm-hmm. their, their innovation and entrepreneurship yeah. program. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's actually where I, I, I 
went through a lot of sales processes, you know, okay. uh, for the first time in that, like, I was responsible for something myself and mm-hmm. what I was talking to other folks about. Yeah. Right? And so uh, uh, um, I, I would say I cut my teeth there. Good. And, and uh, 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 a guy, uh, Dr. Matt Klein there, yeah. uh, he forced us in a program. And actually, it was our second class. Uh, and part of the uh, uh, the program was we'd go out and talk to 25 people about some some idea. Yeah. And then, uh, um, you know, we'd go through the process of tape recording ourselves and watching ourselves speak and that pain, mm-hmm, right? Because mm-hmm. nobody likes that the first couple of times right, you see that. Right. Uh, but but realizing it, understanding it, and, and, and being able to improve on it. And then, you know, a, a week later, the assignment was now go out and talk to 75 more people. So you're talking to 100 people inside of a, a couple of weeks yeah. and, and really getting intense about the process of learning how to meet folks, talk with them, yeah. and explain an idea, yeah. right? Interesting. Well, I think Matt Klein is a great resource we have in Greenville. Absolutely. I, mean, I can't tell how many MBAs, including my son, who who went through the program, and that's the one they talk about. They always talk about Matt Klein. Right. And uh, he's just, he's, he's someone who's done business in a number of different companies, and he's explaining to people, you know, what he's learned. Mm-hmm. Kind of what we're doing on Noob School, but... You know, different, a little bit different. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, and then, I, you know, I, I kind of skimmed over also the scan source piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long were you there? Uh, I was there for four years. Four years. Yeah. And then you did the MBA? No. Nope, uh, that Then I, I went down to Charleston, and I got into uh, government contracting a bit. Oh. Uh, worked for a couple uh, armored vehicle manufacturers down okay. there. Okay. And then uh, moved to Virginia Beach, and that's when I worked for uh, uh, ADS, Atlantic Diving Supply. Okay. And they kind of had a distribution model, kind of similar to ScanSource, but very much catered to uh, uh, personal equipment for, yeah. the, uh, uh, for the military. Yeah. Right? Okay. And so when did you get the MBA? Uh, after that, so after about two, that. 2014. Yeah. You came back here. That's correct. Yep. Got the MBA. Is that where you came up with the idea for the packaging school? Uh, I, I went through a few ideas in that yeah. MBA process. Yeah. And uh, uh, thankfully, at the, the, the tail end of it is when I met my now business partner, uh, Dr. Andrew Hurley. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a uh, professor in packaging science uh, down at, at Clemson campus. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he had some pretty fantastic ideas he'd been working on. Uh, in pursuit of his PhD, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, had had become a, a professor or associate professor, and um, you know he was looking for somebody to help him commercialize these ideas. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we met and uh, at a sort of a matchmaking event for business. Wow! And uh, you know, actually, our our uh, our first year of working together was based on a handshake. Wow. You know, just feeling each other out, and you know, establishing some some good rapport and trust with each other, yeah. and, and have not looked back. That's so, great. What a great story that is. Handshake deal. Yeah. Old fashioned way. I love <laughs> it. So when you got out of the Citadel, went to work, you probably had some thoughts about sales in general, what sales was, salespeople. Give us some ideas that you had about sales that turned out to be wrong. Well, uh um I I my perspective at that time, I was intimidated by the commission. Right. Mm. And and just just understanding, you know, how the economy, if yeah. nothing else, yeah. is sinusoidal, right? right. And and the, the 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 pluses and minuses of that. Uh and and uh so I was too intimidated by that to really try to to, to jump into that world, mm-hmm. right? Um and who knows what could have happened had I jumped off that cliff yeah. and, and gone through the, the the cycles a few times, right? Yeah. But uh, um I was I was wrong about being intimidated by that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you, you know, you're, you're basically you're judged on your performance regardless. Yes, right? yeah. And uh, uh, with sales, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more straightforward math equation. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Interesting point. I mean, a lot of a lot of noobs, a lot of a lot of people that become salespeople aren't like you, meaning they don't have as good of a degree. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't have the Financial, <laughs> yeah. so we're yeah. just like you know. So I majored in political science or gym or something, and now I get out of school. What am I going to do? It's like well, sales. You know, right. maybe you can sell something. You can make a living. So it is interesting. So it's it's yeah, that's interesting. Is there anything um, 
any decisions that you made that really helped you? Because you've had a very interesting career and you're obviously doing well now, but some of the decisions you made that were very good for your career? Uh, sure. Um, so, so record keeping, you know, is mm-hmm. obviously pretty important. Yeah. Uh, 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 over eight years with starting these businesses, uh, I've had some clients come back six years later after an initial introduction yeah. and like, you know, full proposal process with them where the timing just wasn't right, yeah. but they didn't forget us. Yeah. Right. And then when the timing was right and there was a, a, a better opportunity on the table, mm-hmm. they came back around. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, you know, keeping track of what you said six years ago and how that proposal yeah. kind of came through, yeah. uh, extremely important. And of course, you know, dovetailed into that, uh, you've got to have a fantastic way to, you know, keep keep your your clients and your contacts straight, right? So a great CRM. Yeah. So uh, what do y'all um, use for CRM? Uh, let's see. It, it's, uh, now that you've asked me, I'm going to stumble on it, but uh, okay. I, I just refer to it as AC. But uh, um, yeah. Uh, the it'll it'll come to me in a little while what that stands for. There's a lot of good ones. There's there, one, there, there are. was one called ACT Act a long time ago. I don't know if that's the same one or not. But um, active campaign. Active. Okay. Yeah, because that ties into uh, a, a lot of you know formulaic sort of emails yeah. that you want to stay on top of too. So yeah, I, I'm I'm all over the place with with the CRMs. I mean, the really adva- the sales forces and the, those really advanced ones. I'm a little turned off to them because mm-hmm. I don't want to be a slave to filling out paperwork. You know? Right. Um, so I like the simple Hub HubSpot's been good for us. Sure. Uh, Pipe Drive is pretty simple. So anyway, as long as you're doing something. Well, the 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 best CRM I've got is is uh, um, and I started this in the MBA process, just going through my contacts from the previous years yeah. and building up LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, LinkedIn's just a phenomenon that it's yeah. a voluntary database of everybody's resume. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I probably use that, you know, not just exploratory, but as a real resource, mm-hmm. you know, several times a week. Yeah. So me too. Me too. I love, love the LinkedIn. Do um, you have one particular piece of advice you'd want to pass on to the noobs before they start their career? Oh, let's see. Um, well, <laughs> learn from me. Don't be intimidated by the uh, uh, the, the commission equation, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, de- definitely uh, it might be tough at first, but uh, I think most organizations, you know, have an allotment for that, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and also, of course, you know, some don't be intimidated by rejection, you know, yeah. because rejection, you know, is is a lot of the times only temporary. Right. You know, you, you can find a way to say yes eventually. Just yeah. get let a little bit of time pass, right? right. So, yeah. 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 And again, I guess what what word do you put with rejection? Rejection could be a bad word or rejection could be translated into not now. Yeah, not right now. You know? That's exactly right. <laughs> Maybe <Yep>. later. <laughs> um, well, before we finish, I want to talk to the, to the noobs real quick. I have a couple more questions for Drew. But if, if you like what you're – if you like what you're you're seeing and you're hearing, uh, do me a favor, subscribe to it, follow it, forward it to your friends. This is stuff that can help any salesperson, particularly young salespeople, as they're starting their career. So please do that. Do me a favor and do that today. Click like, make it make a sound, whatever whatever it is you do. Um, so Drew, a couple more questions. First one is, tell us your favorite word. Uh, uh, I, I was thinking balance, but it's it's balance that tips toward progress, right? Uh-huh. Or growth. Yeah. Maybe maybe growth is probably the, the okay. a favorite word. Good. I like it. Growth like mindset, it. right? I like it. Yeah, that's very good. Growth is a good word. I haven't heard that one before, but that's a good one. I think as long as you're moving in the right direction. When I was coming out of school as a noob, I was in way too big of a hurry. <laughs> you know, and you, you can't be in too big of a hurry, right? Because you're just you're gonna you're gonna be like Icarus. You're gonna fly too far, fly too high. And um, I, li- I like just growth. I like that. Just moving forward. Uh, and then and then in terms of what you're doing now, is there anything you want to promote or talk about to the to the listeners and the watchers here about what you're doing? You're looking for any employees or maybe people that might want to subscribe to what you're doing? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, well. Obviously, 
anybody who's in that packaging world, yeah. uh, uh, packagingschool.com is, is a fantastic resource. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and really, you know, part of the genesis of that uh, as a, a, a resource, a tool, a company, uh, packagingschool.com is bringing people with varied backgrounds to the same table and then uh, and enabling them to speak the same language around packaging. Okay. And, and what that means is, is think of things like uh, material sciences, mm-hmm. right? Uh, uh, production processes, uh, um, you know, other important influences like in, in this world, uh, like uh, uh, sustainability, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, something that, that, you know, the, the biggest brands in the world have needed to make a pillar of their brand face, how mm-hmm. they interact with both consumers and, and the public at large mm-hmm. for brand perception, uh, you know, it comes back to sustainability for, for good reason. Yeah. Um, but teaching folks, you know, that language and how everything sort of comes together in that that world of design mm-hmm. uh, 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 and packaging. We, we think packaging is awesome. Packaging education is valuable. And packagingschool.com is a, is a super efficient way to gain packaging education. Good. So. Packagingschool.com. If you're into packaging or you want to be, packagingschool.com. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Drew, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Love watching what you're doing. And I promise I can't wait to get together and compare notes on the on our various internet schools. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Watch your head getting up.